Hey, give me a flake man here doing a video response to myself. Let me put a little light here. A little more light here. Um, the slightly lower quality is due to the fact that I'll be using Cam Twist again. For those of you who have Macintoshes, Cam Twist is an excellent way to suddenly um, put uh, special effects into your video as you actually make the video. So uh, let's see. I'll use a color yellow here. There, see. For example, and you can put anything you want there. All right, give me a flake mount, okay? And you can also move it around like this, like this. See? Okay, so um, I guess I can get up close to the camera and get in the middle and take up as much black space as possible. All right, let's get on with it. Uh, boy, I haven't made one of these in a long time, and I do apologize, but you know, uh, they take a long time to make. <laughs> Actually, it's just fine. It's what it is. What this is, in case for those of you who don't know, is um, this is a video response to my sixth Japanese lesson on Give Me a Break Man. And what I do with this video is I'm, 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 I've gone to that the comment section, I've gone through all 200 plus comments and looked for questions that I can answer, uh, kind of you know, supporting that video and the people. Well, I think you get it, right? I'm answering questions, okay? So let's get on uh, with it. First uh, comment question the thing that I'm going to respond to comes from Charlene B. And she said she'd like to see, to see me talk about Wase Ego a bit in my English. Uh, yeah, Wase Ego is often uh, introduced um, as, a whole, as a whole different chapter. Wase Ego refers to Wa is um, Japanese, Se is made, and Ego is English. So Wase Ego means um, Japanese, style, Japanese made English is the literal literal translation of the kanji. Notice my eyebrows move like that when I'm becoming a teacher. So I'll try, try not to do that. <laughs> do this way. Okay. So, uh, for example, wase ego. <laughs> What's an example of wase ego? Um, table. Table. Right? Um, beer. Beer. So anything that basically was ta was um, kind of borrowed. These are called borrowed words. Another word. Yeah, another word for that is uh, words that are borrowed from other languages and made into um, uh, into English, uh, into Japanese, but still retain the um, the um, a ri slightly original sound of the original. That's wase ego. Uh, some people say Japanese English. That's another example of it. Uh, and what's an example? Well, here's another one. Here's some. I'm looking at um, Wikipedia just for examples, which you could do. Famicom. Actually, this is actually, a, you know, some of these words you can figure out, like teburu's table, so it's kind of just the um, Japanese pronunciation. But some words are actually created and don't mean anything in our original, um, in the original language, and those are the ones that we really want to focus on. Uh, for example, um, famicon, which is family con, or walk, well, I guess originally walkman, walkman was an originally a, um, um, a wase ego, walkman, we say walkman now, but I guess wakuman was the original. Um, you know, expression, but let me see, another one, uh, let's see, another one apparently, hmm? yeah, ka karaoke, karaoke is apparently one, I didn't realize that, kara means empty, that's Japanese, and oke is orchestra, so combined, that's a word that's uh, used in, uh, spelled out in, in katakana, usually, and is known as wase ego, anyway, so, these are the these are really fun, but the problem is with these expressions. Let me put it in katakana. The, the problem with these expressions is that uh, even for us um, native speakers, we don't recognize a lot of them, and you know, we just don't. Here's another one. Well, I don't have one now, but why why shots why shirts? I think I pronounced that right. That's a um, a, a dress white shirt that you wear wear for work. You know, button down white shirt. They say why shots. Um, yeah, those. Anyway, that's that's what she was referring to. So. So uh, there's, a, I mean, we could do a whole lesson on that, but it's just a lot of vocabulary building there. Let's go on to the next thing. Um, let's see. She wants to. Know, oh, Squire CD says, uh, "I heard that quite a. I, I've also heard quite a bit that when traveling in Japan, it's, it is helpful to write down your question rather than try to speak it in English." Uh, yeah, if you do not speak Japanese or English, uh, sorry, if you don't, if you speak English but don't speak any Japanese, and you want to get your point across. Sometimes it is very helpful to carry around just a pad and write down the question in English. And people seem to be able to read it and understand it much better than if you just spoke it. Their listening is quite terrible. 
so yes, that's the answer. Um, they can read much better than they can speak. Um, Eleven Color says, uh, thanks for the tip on Speedy Con Kiwi. And he says one small tip. He talks about two words, which I will point out now. Two words, uh, I, I mentioned, I guess, in the video, it's such a long time ago, I barely remember, that in Japanese, we, uh, chigao, this is the word, chigao, ready? I'm going to put it in kanji. This is the word, chigao. And I'll, it's pronounced this way, chigao. This word means different and wrong. So this is something I commented on the Japanese culture, how being different is wrong, and that's why everyone feels pressure to be the same, which is not, you know, it's, it's a sim simplistic uh, view of the J Japanese culture, of course, but, but kind of a, a good little story to tell people, <laughs> a good way to make a quick comment. Anyway, he mentions that there's another word, chigao is both wrong and different, but there's another word, koto, where is it, kotonaru, which he's very, oh, I should just put up his. He's very nice to give me the kanji and the kataka and the, and the romaji. Maybe he thinks I can't read it, but of course I can. This is a kotonaru, and kotonaru means actually different, not wrong, just different. So, it, and sometimes in, in a conversation, even uh, native, native um, speakers will say chigao, and we won't know if they mean different or wrong, and you can uh, clear things up using that. I've, I keep getting this message, so I'm going to try to do this again, although, you know, I'm sure I'll have to pronounce it. Uh, explain it again. Okay, wa and wa. Wa and wa, right? I've talked about this quite a bit before, but let me explain again. Okay, for example, watashi wa bikuta desu. When I say watashi wa bikuta desu, you can write it either way, wa ha or wa uh, wa, okay? Apparently Japanese, when they're writing romaji, now remember, <laughs> when I say you can write it in any way, I mean in these, using the alphabet, using the American, the, the Western, the English alphabet, right? H-A or W-A, either way is fine. However, I use H-A because that's the way I was taught, and uh, other countries, apparently in Germany, they use W-A, apparently Japanese use W-A. It doesn't really matter. So I'm stuck, I've, you know, I've been using H-A, so I keep with H-A, but, you know, if you want to write in Romaji, write W-A when you're referring to the, when you're using this uh, article as a, as a reference to the subject, like Watashi wa, I am, Watashi wa bikuta desu, I am Victor, in that case, uh, Feel free to use it, either one, but be consistent. Now, if you're going to type into your computer HA to try to get the, um, well, let me show you. There is a difference in Japanese, however, when you type them in Japanese, HA is HA, is OR. So this is pronounced, this is pronounced, I hate talking about this again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little annoyed. <laughs> HA or WA. Be patient if you're a teacher. Um, WA. This hiragana over here, this hiragana right here, where my fingers are, right there, that can be pronounced wa. I mean, it can be pronounced wa or ha, depending on the situation. If you pronounce it wa, it's a subject marker, and you're pointing to the subject like watashi wa. If you pronounce it ha, it's probably part of another word, like, um, now of course I can't remember anything, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> What's the word with ha? Ha. Haka. Grave. Why would I say that? <laughs> ha hamaki. Cigar. Okay. So, for example, if I wanted to um, type out the word hamaki in Japanese, I would use this. Is this the way you do it? Yeah. Well, if I do it in hiragana, I would do it that way. Hamaki. Right. Of course, there's kanji for hamaki too. So, anyway. Um. Yeah, I think you get the idea. I think I hope everyone understands now. But this this word, this word here in hiragana is only pronounced wa, only wa wa wa. And for example, watashi spelled out in hiragana is always watashi, watashi, and never anything else. Okay, it's never uses it never uses the ha, uh, hiragana. By the way, to those of you who stumbled on this video back then. This kind of writing is called hiragana, and in Japanese we refer to this as romaji. 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 Okay, let's continue. Chad5161 says, oh, same thing about the waga. Okay. Uh, Linfei um, tries to explain good. Uh, Chad516, uh, Chad516 asks me about how do you say 
um, bitch in Japanese. We don't really say bitch in Japanese. Uh, I guess the closest you would say is kono ama. Kono ama. But, you know, it's really, really rude. You know how ja in English bitch is not so bad sometimes. You can say it on uh, television, not a big deal. Um, but it, I would completely avoid it in Japanese. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't like somebody, just not liking them publicly and speaking out that you don't like them is enough. And I would just say, kanojo uh, kirai, just kirai, I, I hate her, kirai, kanojo kirai, kanojo kirai, and that's a very casual way to say it with no articles, um, but anyway, okay, next thing, uh, Nova, Ve Nova 9, I always call him Nova 9, Nova 9 asked me about Itsu, can Itsu mean box, uh, can Itsu mean box, no, Itsu just means when. It's a, okay, so, um, yeah. I don't know what he's confused with. Let's see. So this net. So this net. Um, this is from RBXJM2. And he asks me about the expression so this net. And what does it mean? And it just means, yep. Uh, isn't that right? Um, yeah, so this net isn't that correct? I or I kind of an agreement sound. For example, um Kyo wa samui desu. Today it is cold. Kyo wa samui desu. Today it is cold and the other person listening to this conversation might say, So this ne? Yes, isn't it? Or yes, I agree with you. Um The example that oh X A K R Y N and I forgot to pronounce your name says Kanojo wa kirei desu ne. This is her example. If someone says Kanojo wa kirei desu ne, and you can answer so desu ne. Now she has a question mark, which is wrong. So so X Sarin, um, I would say don't say question mark. Just say so desu ne. So desu ne. So yoff. So desu ne. So desu ne. So desu ne. You also you also hear so da yo ne. So da ne. Also hear so da ne. So da na and uh, Osaka maybe a little bit more. Um, now RBXJM2 also says I'm oh I'm past my peak. He tries to write in Japanese. I think he looked a, he used a translator, so I'm not going to comment on that. Except I'm not past my peak. Punk, a little young punk. Um, since Chigai was mm -hmm. The Smithster says, since Chigai means both different and correct, how can you tell the difference? I just answered that, so just, uh, yeah, go on. Uh, Exacrin, I don't know how to say your name, I know you told me once. Zacrin says, Tanoskata des, arigatou gozaimasu, Victoru sama. And this is a silly question. How, uh, how long have you been an English teacher in Japan? 17 years. And how much did Japanese before you go? How much Japanese did you know before going there? I only learned hiragana really, and I knew like very basic, like watashi wa bikta, that kind of stuff. I did not speak any when I really got when I got there. I knew very, very, very little. Um, I, I, Zacharin says she wants he or she, I think it's a woman um, has said uh, she wants she has wanted to be an English teacher all her life and just wondering about what kind of schooling. Basically, if you want to teach English in Japan, a BA in anything will get will most probably get you a job, but uh, with a limited future. Um, so, I have a couple of videos on this. If you look on, I, uh, look on to the story of two dirty gaijin and how they found love. It's on Give Me Flake Man as well. I made it about two weeks ago, and I and, and if you type into the um, search engine Give Me Flake Man and uh, work in Japan, I think I did another video on that. Wall of Weird with three L's says, um, as an English teacher in Japan, what do you think is harder, learning English when you are fluent in Japanese or learning Japanese when you are fluent in English? It really depends on the person. You know, I've seen some people who can learn. I've met some of my students have learned English, have become fluent in English just by studying really hard and they've never been out of the country. And I hear there's some Chinese people like that too. Um, in fact, a lot more in China because uh, a lot more people over there and, and they travel even less. Let's see, Darius321 says, you're saying, okay, the same waha question. So sorry, I already answered that. <laughs> I should just erase those questions for myself. Yopi Kyabetsu um, asks me, maybe something in the future, uh, sometimes in the future, talk about the way men and women pronounce words. And 
And the only thing I'll say about that is that I, some even now, have trouble understanding men when they have a conversation between themselves, and it's really rough. Like, but um, in a in a polite situation when you're talking to a man, his Japanese will be very in, uh, in, easy to understand. And women, I find, are almost always uh, easy to understand. The more you TV you watch, the more you, you get used to it. I just watched Seven Samurai for the first time in like uh, 15 years or longer. Uh, and I realized I could understand a lot of it now, but I couldn't then, back then. Maybe, you know, like about 15 years. Anyway, Laura Croft socks my, uh, rocks my socks has a question that I have to pause the video for before I continue because I'm not sure what the answer is. Just Okay, yeah, I just want to verify the, qu the question and answer. She asked about this word, hikoki. And um, she asked me if I did not uh, make the part a little long. Um, I don't think so. As you can see here, for those of you who can read hiragana, I'll put it romajina, hikoki. That's what it looks like when written on hiragana and you can see the coal part. She asked if the coal part is not too long. No, that's the way it looks. Um, let's see. And, and she asked other questions and there are more questions on the on the uh, comment, uh, in the comment section. And the, those that I answered and by just making comments to back to them, you can go and look at those. I'm not going to repeat them here because it's going to be another one hour video. Let's see. Um, Killer Curb asks if this is correct. Correct, excuse me. And I will tell you now. Tanoshikata des. No. When you put the uh, when you remember adjectives can be past tense in um, Japanese. So tanoshi means fun. Tanoshikata. In that case, you take out the i. See the i. I'm pointing at my screen. Take out the i right there. Get it ready. Gone. See. Tanoshikata des. You drop the I. These are, there's a bunch of um, adjectives called E adjectives. Those are adjectives that are, end in E, like tanoshi, um, futoi, uh, samui. Anyway, drop the E's on them and add kata, and it becomes past tense. Uh, little rule there. I'm not going to do a whole lesson on that, but hopefully these will sink in, sink in little by little. Mercenario Sora asks, isn't Nanda another way to say why? Yes, the word nande, 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 nan, but why nande? Doste nande? Which was nan nan nanda yo? That's a different <laughs> expression. Nande also means why. Yes, that's true. Doste nande. I think nande is a little more rough. Like how come? Hmm. My gut impression. Okay. Now I live for anime. <laughs> cute name says, I thought, you said Uchi was house. What's the difference between Uchi and Ie? These two words, Uchi and Ie. Um, watashi no Uchi, watashi no Ie. I don't know. I don't think there is a difference. But Uchi also means, Uchi no means my um, area or my group. Remember in Japanese, we kind of uh, refer to things as in your group or outside of your group. And that's how we determine politeness levels. If someone's in your group, you don't say sama, for example, or san. If someone calls your office and you want to say your coworker's not here, you don't say san. You say that person's name. Um, but anyway, and in your family too, uh, you don't say otosan. You say chichi. But another person's father, you say otosan. Anyway, so uh, I think they're about the same. Yeah, I don't really. If anyone has a, a better answer than mine, please feel free. Uh, gut impression, they're the same. Okay, Tanoskata Dayo, uh, C White 7575 says, uh, If someone asked me, Sore wa nan desu ka? What is that? Should I replay, Dare, dare wa Rice Krispies des? Huh? Um, is this a joke? <laughs> dare wa, oh no, maybe, oh, I'm sorry, it's an example. <laughs> okay, you know what? It sounds like a joke because. <laughs> Here's what he says. Okay, sorry, one. Let me let me put this up so everyone can say. Ready? The question is, sorry, what is that? What is that? Sorry, what is that? Sorry, what is that? Sorry, is that? What is referring to sorry? Nan, nani, nan, 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 nani desu ka? That's a mistake. Sorry, nan desu ka? Not my mistake. His mistake. Sorry, what nan desu ka? Not nani desu ka? Uh, and he said, he said, should I reply, dare wa rice krispies desu? This is his answer. Dare wa, now, dare wa means, uh, well, dare means who. 
So that, first of all, is wrong. You would say, um, kore, if it's in your area, say, kore wa rice krispies desu. This is, kore means this, this is rice krispies. Okay, what was that white tub tube in your hand that kept waving around and asking what it was? Um, if it's, oh, it was um, probably cream for the dog, dog, um, uh, yeah, they think it wasn't like any kind of weird uh, pimple cream or thick cream or anything. It was, uh, yeah, he says, uh, <laughs> he says, if it's embarrassing, you probably shouldn't use it in a language lesson. No, it was uh, just cream for the dog, uh, for her, for the dog's um, skin problems. French bulldogs get a lot of skin problems, so. Or it was foot fungus thing, which is something it could have been. It could have been glue, you know. I don't, I don't, honestly don't remember, but that's, if it was on my desk, it was most likely the dog cream. Okay. Uh, oh, see why he corrects himself, say, I meant Korewa Rice Krispies. Okay, good. Mitch Hans, Mitch, Mitch Edge Sansom um, says, I think you should explain to the munchkins the difference between these three. So we will do that right now. What is the difference between Kore, Kono, and Kona? Okay, Kore means this. Kono is this when it's used uh, in addition to a noun. For example, if I just want to refer to this pen, I say, Kore wa watashi no pen desu. This is my pen. Or let's do something very simple. Kore wa au desu. This is blue. Kore wa pen desu. This is a pen. Now, if I want to refer, refer to this pen, right, then you just say, use the middle one here. Kono pen. Kono pen wa Watashi no pen desu. This pen, or kono pen wa au desu. This pen is blue. So, this, kore is just this. Kono is this plus noun. So, this plus any noun. Kono pen, kono, eh, where is it? Kono iPod, kono cup, kono hon, this book, right? Sometimes you hear an anime, kono yaro, like this son of a bitch, kono yaro. Uh, I don't know why they use that actually. This son of a bitch. Kono yaro. Konna. Konna. Um, why don't we use konahito? Let me get a good example for you. A common example. Just a second. Okay, just a little search. And apparently the most common use of kona is before an adjective. So, kono pen. Kono pen. This pen. But kona e, for example. Um, let's, write, let's write it out. Well, no, I won't write it out because I want to save time. You guys can do the work. Kona uh, let's give a, give you an example. Konna oishi wine. Kore made nonda koto nai. I'll give you the whole sentence. Oishi, as most of you know, means delicious, right? So konna oishi. Here's an example sentence. Konna oishi wine. And I'll just put out here. Konna over here. Kona oishi wine. Wine this delicious. Kore made until now. Until now. Nonda koto nai. I have not ever tasted. I've never tasted. I've never tasted wine this good. So konna plus adjective seems to be uh, the most common way to use it. Kona i tomodachi. Kona, kona i hotel. The, uh, I guess uh, the translation would be. A friend this good. A friend this good. Konna i tomodachi. A hotel this good. Kono i hotel would be the way we, uh, we use it, right? But um, here's some more examples. Of, well, I, the most common examples are before adjectives. Then we also see the 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 um, the, the pairing of konna koto. This is absur ab absurd. For example, konna koto baka baka shi. This is absurd. Konakoto is something like that, I guess. Yeah, this. It's just a, a stressor of this. What else? Konakoto ga atem tamaru ka. Can't think of another good short. I'm looking for a short example. Let me see. Konakoto. Huh? Konakoto anata ni mento mukatte ienai no de. I can't say this to your face. I can't say something. I guess it's the stress of like something like this. Something like this. Yeah. Konna, konna koto. Something like this. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the most uh, common use of those. Uh, and of course, with um, Japanese, once you have the konna out of the way, then you have the pairs of sore, 
Remember, yeah, this is kore, kono, kona. And then we have sore, sono, and sona, which are which is that. Right? Sore, sono, and sona. Sore wa, that is. Sono is that plus noun. Sono hito, that guy. Sono hito, that guy. Sonna, sonna koto nai. Yeah, we often hear that pairing, sonna koto nai desu. No, that's not true. Actually, that's a very good Japanese um, expression, set phrase to, to learn. Sonna koto nai desu. If someone compliment, compliments you Japanese, you should answer, sonna koto nai desu. Nihongo jōzu desu ne. If someone says to you, Nihongo jōzu desu ne, isn't your Japanese great? You should answer, sonna koto nai desu. No, it's not. Even if your Japanese is great, we always answer the same way. It's just the way things are done. Don't bother me uh, trying to express your personality in Japanese. <laughs> Just try to learn it correctly first, then you can experiment. Um, are and ano, uh, I think in Jap I think in Spanish, ano means uh, anus. <laughs> anyway, are is that. Let me explain very quickly. Okay, uh, we need we need to, uh, we, need to uh, we need imagination. Okay, you have two people, right? Anything close to this person in this area is kono to him. And anything over there, from this point of view, is... I guess I should need, I need people. Hold on, let me get Maggie over here, and let me get... Um, okay, we have Maggie, and we have a Australian koala. Now, let's say that Maggie wants to refer to the flag. Now, because the flag is far away from Maggie, Maggie would refer to the flag as sore or sono. Okay, because it's far away from her, and the koala would re refer to the flag as kore or kono because it's in his area. So anything that is in his area is kore and kono. Anything that is in her that is in her area from his point of view is sore or sono, and vice versa. So things in your area are kore and kono, and things in uh, the person's area that you're talking to are sore and sono. Now sometimes there's something in an area that's far away from both of you, and that in that case you use are and ano. Okay, and we do also say, I don't know why he didn't mention Anna. Anna. Yeah, Anna. Anna. Yeah, anyway, we also have Anna. But again, this is just a quick answer. This is not, um, this is the, let me see. Why not, why didn't you say, why didn't you answer Anna? Let me add that to the list. Anna. Anna koto. But we don't, I guess we just don't say it that much. Let me look if I can find a quick example of Anna. Yeah, that kind of. Anna kat, let me see. Anna koto kotte. Yeah, Anna is the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. Something like that. So, it's a stressor. Um, Anna koto. Kono koto, sono koto, and Anna koto, right? Let's see. Gucci girl says, uh, What about nande? Uh, I know that nan is what and de is kind of like by, but I'm sure if it's combined. Yeah, na nande uh, also means why. So, same question as before. Um, Free token says, please do lessons that talk more about the way people really speak and not um, grammar stuff in books, which uh, I'm trying to do. Okay. B, B Cobbs makes the same question about ha and wa. Drummerboy0186 says, I've heard that pointing is rude. Is that true? I've never thought about it, but I can't remember ever pointing at anyone in Japanese. Pointing is rude in English for sure, right? I do it for fun in the video. But um, you do point at yourself a lot, like watashi, ore, boku, you know, that kind of stuff. Let me see. Um, Tanoshikata deshita. Is that right? Is that a right way to say? Um, I enjoyed it, since it's past tense. I, you know, I think grammatically it might be right, but I've never heard anyone say that. Just tanoshikata des. It was enjoyable. Let me do a quick search for this. Tanoshi. I don't think we say Tanoshikata desu ka. Let me... Now, for those of you who are going, why didn't he prepare? Because if I prepare, it'll take me even longer to make this video. Uh, let me see. No, I don't see any atta desu. Let me see. Let me try something. No, there is no... No, you wouldn't use... Uh, yeah, no. You don't use past tense twice. Tanoshikata desu. Yeah. Asking me off the bat, I thought maybe I was wrong, but I was right. Okay, let's go back to your questions. Almost finished, guys. I know it's a long video. Let's see. Uh, I have some questions. I noticed that when some, whenever someone is uh, is um, speaking Nihongo, 
They usually okay. Yes, this is a good question. In an express in a in a question, the question is about the pronunciation of I in this in this uh, word. For example, tanosh, kata. Okay. In this example, tanosh kata means I enjoyed it. It was fun. I enjoyed myself. So, for example, for my last video, if you had watched all the way to the end, I asked you to say if you enjoyed this video, just write tanosh kata. Yes. Now he asked about the I here, and I'll space this out so you can. The I here is you can't hear it, right? Tanosh kata, tanoshi kata. We don't really hear tanoshi kata, tanosh tanosh kata. Desu. And often when the I is in the middle, it's just not pronounced, um, especially if it's following sh. Um, just the way people pronounce things. Okay, so yeah, you're right. Uh, also asking me about ie and uh, ie for no. Yeah, no is actually ie, ie, and house is actually just ie. Okay, uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard some Japanese say nande for why. That's true. Naze also means why. Nande, naze, doshite. All, of the, all of these questions uh, are question words for why. Okay, let's see. Next question. Um, uh, wa and ha question. Again, great, I'm done. Oh, last question. <laughs> are there any slang words for hi and hello? Slang words? There is. Um, there's, a, there's a word, but uh, I never use it. But um, hello. Sabayo, I think, is the word. Uh, let's see. Ya. Konnichiwa, moshi moshi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so for hello, looking at a quick dictionary. Ya, ya, or konnichiwa, moshi moshi. Moshi moshi is what you say on the telephone. Like, hello, moshi moshi. Um, people also say ero or haro. So, mi, um, konnichiwa, no. konnichiwa. Yaho. Some people say Yaho. I don't know why. But some people say Yaho. So those are some slang words for hello and hi. All right. Really long lesson. Thanks for putting up with this. I'll try to get back into the swing of making Japanese lessons more often. Um, until then, see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment. Just tell me you uh, watched this thing all the way through. The code word um, is koala. If you watch all the way, way to the end, say koala.